Hey everyone, I'm Harvest Build Destroy, and this is a channel about RTS games. In this video, I want to revisit Age of Empires 4 and talk a bit about why I'm starting to feel a bit more optimistic about it than I was when it was first announced. There's always good reason to be a bit skeptical when a classic franchise is taken over by a new company, but when I look at all of the RTS developers that could have been chosen, I think Relic might actually be the best choice. Not just for Age of Empires 4 itself, but perhaps for the future of the RTS genre as a whole. To explain why I think this is the case, let's take a look at who else could have done it. For the longest time, my RTS pipe dream was that Blizzard would somehow acquire the rights to the Age of Empires franchise and develop Age of Empires 4, but I'm no longer entirely sure that that would be such a good idea. Sure, it would more than likely be a fantastic game, but it would probably also give Blizzard such complete monopoly over the RTS genre that other major developers might just give up on it entirely. Basically, I think competition is good in RTS. And the back and forth between Blizzard, Westwood, Ensemble, and others in the 90s was a very healthy thing for the genre. Now that Ensemble, Westwood, and Chris Taylor's gas-powered games are all defunct, Relic is the closest thing the genre has to a Pepsi or a Burger King, so to speak. And the acquisition of such a famed franchise as Age of Empires could tip Relic over the edge and give Blizzard the closest thing they've had to competition in many years. But aside from Blizzard and Relic, who else could have done it? To start, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss EA out of hand. We certainly don't want Age of Empires to go in anything resembling the direction Command & Conquer has gone under EA. I, for one, will pass on Age of Empires rivals. Now that Gas Powered Games is no more, you could argue that Chris Taylor, designer of Total Annihilation and Supreme Commander, might have been a good choice, but he recently started his own independent studio and is already developing his own new RTS game. Personally, I'd rather just see him do that. It's been a while since we've had a significant new IP in RTS, and the more RTS games we have to choose from, the better, at least as far as I'm concerned. On the surface, the most logical candidate would perhaps have been Robot Entertainment, one of the companies started by former Ensemble Studios employees after Ensemble went defunct. But personally, I don't think they would have been the best choice. To start with, only a small fraction of Ensemble's former employees work for them anyway. On top of that, most of us in the Age of Empires 2 community think that even Ensemble proper got a fair bit wrong on Age of Mythology and Age of Empires 3, solid games though they were. My first three videos were essentially about this, and to this day remain my most viewed videos by a pretty large margin. The only RTS game that Robot Entertainment has worked on is Age of Empires Online, and, well, in the Age community, we sort of like to pretend that that game never existed. We tend to prefer to think of it as a non-canonical Age game. In fact, I've already spent too much time talking about it. I personally do not want the company that made that game to make Age of Empires 4. I don't think the other companies started by former Ensemble employees are particularly good choices either. They all seem to be developing mobile games these days. Ensemble is no more, and I'd rather see them branch off into other games if Age of Empires Online is anything to go by. It's sort of like when a band breaks up, and one or two of the members make another band or go solo, and basically end up making the same kind of music without the original members. Without the chemistry of the classic lineup, the magic is gone, and many fans are left with the feeling that they've cheapened their own legacy. Another possible candidate could have been Rob Pardo's new studio, which, confusingly, is called Bonfire Studios. I say confusingly because one of the companies formed by former Ensemble employees was also called Bonfire Studios, and later on Zynga Dallas, but that company closed its doors in 2013. This is a different Bonfire Studios, formed by former Blizzard employees rather than former Ensemble employees, which just happens to have the same name. When I first heard that Rob Pardo was a part of Bonfire Studios, I got excited for what I thought would be the greatest RTS crossover episode imaginable, but alas, it wasn't the Bonfire Studios I was thinking of. Anyway, if you're unaware, Rob Pardo is a former Blizzard employee who was the lead designer of both StarCraft 1 and WarCraft 3. It's hard to argue that he wouldn't be a great choice for Age of Empires 4, regardless of who was working underneath him. You could easily say that he's the greatest RTS designer of all time, and he's noted his admiration for Age of Empires 2 in the past. But I also think he's something of a genius, and has certainly earned the right to follow his creativity wherever it leads. His new studio is currently working on a new IP. Here's to hoping it's an RTS game. The last major candidate I can think of would be Big Huge Games, who designed Rise of Nations and Rise of Legends, and you could certainly at least argue that they were the logical choice for Age of Empires 4. Though Rise of Legends was sort of a flop, Rise of Nations was a well-regarded game that you could describe as fitting into the same subgenre of RTS as Age of Empires, a historical game with a larger number of gatherable resources. They also have prior experience with Age of Empires, having designed the Asian Dynasties expansion for Age of Empires 3. While I personally thought that Age of Empires 3 already had too many civilizations in the vanilla version of the game, given its more asymmetrical design than the first two Age of Empires games, I think Big Huge Games did a pretty good job with the task they were assigned. The new civilizations and maps were interesting enough, it was just that there were too many matchups, and consequently the game's competitive balance was kind of a mess. 
There's also the fact that the original Big Huge Games team was disbanded in 2012. While the key figures at Big Huge Games formed a new company in 2013 and acquired the rights to the name Big Huge Games again in 2014, it's not clear how much of the original team is still on board in 2018. The only game they've released since their revival has been a mobile game, too. So though I wouldn't necessarily begrudge someone thinking Big Huge Games would have been a better choice for Age of Empires 4 than Relic, I do happen to disagree. In fact, if you'll indulge me and perhaps put on your ever-so-slightly rose-tinted glasses, I think there are a number of reasons to think Relic was a rather good choice, and from what we know so far, they seem to be taking the right approach. To start, Relic's fanbase is a lot larger than any of the other potential candidates, unless you count Blizzard. You might argue that that has nothing to do with the game itself and is therefore irrelevant, but I don't think it is. We should all want as many people as possible to play Age of Empires 4. I know RTS players tend to be pretty intensely tribal and often rather vehemently dislike every RTS game other than the one they happen to play, in many cases I suspect without having actually played them themselves, but I just don't see it that way myself. For example, I personally have absolutely no interest whatsoever in the Total War franchise. As soon as you remove base building and resource gathering from an RTS game, you lose me as a potential fan. I'm just not interested. My channel's called Harvest Build Destroy for a reason. But it nonetheless makes me quite happy to see that so many people play those games, because at the end of the day, that means more people playing RTS games, which I view as an inherent good, even if they're not the type of RTS game that I'd want to play myself. The more people there are playing RTS games, the more potential cash flow there is for developers making RTS games, and the brighter the future of the genre will look. So on a similar note, I was pleasantly surprised fairly recently when I found out how popular the Company of Heroes franchise is to this day. Company of Heroes 2 is actually the number four most played RTS game that involves base building, after the two Starcrafts and Age of Empires 2, if we can take the number of players online at a time to be an appropriate metric. That's right, it beats out both Warcraft 3 and Age of Empires 3, the former of which still has a fairly active esports tournament scene with cash prizes. And given that Company of Heroes 2 is a historical RTS game made by the same company, I think we can safely assume that a decent percentage of those players will at least try Age of Empires 4, which as far as I'm concerned can only be a good thing. This is probably as good a time as any to pause and note my personal opinions on Relic's more recent RTS games, as some of the arguments I'm going to make will hinge on them at least somewhat. To keep it brief, I really like both Company of Heroes games and don't care for the Dawn of War franchise at all. There isn't really time to go into this in depth here, and I'm willing to acknowledge that at least part of it is my bias in favor of historical games and against fantasy and especially sci-fi games. But to put it as succinctly as I can, I think that Company of Heroes' three-resource economy of manpower, munitions, and fuel is really well designed, and perfectly complements the game's unit and map design. On the other hand, I find Dawn of War's style of economy to be a bit sloppy and a poor fit for Relic's cover-oriented tactical RTS gameplay. So with that in mind, I was personally happy to hear that Age of Empires 4's lead designer is Quinn Duffy, who is a senior designer on Company of Heroes 1 and game director on Company of Heroes 2. Perhaps just as importantly, he was not involved with any of the Dawn of War games. During Relic's Homeworld 18-year anniversary stream, he answered numerous questions about Age of Empires 4 and generally discussed his philosophy on RTS, and personally, I found what I heard quite reassuring. He says the team is obsessively playing every game in the Age franchise, and I get the impression that they are in every sense looking to develop an Age of Empires game, first and foremost. I think the main reason the Age community is so apprehensive about the idea of Relic making Age of Empires 4 is the fear that they will try to import too many gameplay ideas from their own franchises, like grouping infantry into squads, simplifying resource gathering and base building, incorporating a complicated cover system, and so on. Having seen the Homeworld stream, I personally don't think Relic is likely to do any of that. I now feel fairly confident that Age of Empires 4 will feel like an Age of Empires game. They also discussed the fact that many RTS players are expressing a desire for the genre to return to its 90s roots, and it seems like that's the type of game we're going to get. The only cause for concern in my opinion is that Quinn Duffy did mention something about preferring RTS games with more emphasis on broad strategic decision making rather than high APM requirements, where a single wrong move can lose you a game. Personally, I think Age of Empires 2 strikes the perfect balance between the two such that the game is extremely mechanically difficult while also tending not to hinge so heavily on individual tactical decisions. At least in my experience, it's more in the realm of Blizzard games and Command and & Conquer, where buildings have very low health and the defender's advantage is in general quite minimal, where games tend to be won or lost based on a single mistake. But in general, it appears to me that Relic is approaching Age of Empires 4 from the right angle, and this is something we should be happy about. I also feel pretty confident that Relic will do a good job with the game's unit design, since their RTS games tend to hinge more on unit interactions than Age games typically do. 
This is, of course, assuming that they don't make the colossal mistake of putting infantry units into squads and so on, which, as previously mentioned, I don't think they will. If there's one legitimate criticism I could imagine players of other RTS games lobbying at Age of Empires, it would be that the units are perhaps a bit dull. They rarely have castable abilities and could be thought of as walking rocks, papers, or scissors with a certain set of stats and damage bonuses. Like most in the Age community, I would personally tend to argue that this type of unit design best complements the Age of Empires formula, but if done carefully and subtly enough, I wouldn't mind seeing just a bit more tactical complexity in Age of Empires 4. Personally, I always thought the ability that most units had in Age of Empires 3 to switch between melee and ranged attacks was a pretty cool mechanic, to name one example. Using formations to dodge projectiles in Age of Empires 2 is another, Something that Company of Heroes does very well that could potentially be interesting in Age of Empires 4 is that different units in Company of Heroes have different levels of maneuverability. Vehicles have different turn rates and can only move forward or backward in the direction they're facing. They also take extra damage if attacked from the rear. Similarly, tank turrets can only fire the way they're facing and have their own turn rates. Infantry, on the other hand, have their move speed affected by the type of terrain they're moving through. While I wouldn't like to see Age of Empires 4 place quite so much emphasis on tactical maneuvers like this, a slight move in this direction could be interesting. But it's worth mentioning that features like this need to strike a very delicate balance. At the end of the day, Age of Empires games are ultimately games of production, and the larger army should still generally defeat the smaller one. Tactics should just give the player the possibility of defeating a somewhat larger force if they outcontrol their opponent by enough of a margin, at least in my opinion. And we should also remember that Age of Empires already has features similar to these anyway, like the high ground advantage in Age of Empires 2. If you're unfamiliar, units receive a 25% attack bonus when attacking units on lower terrain, and units attacking other units on higher terrain suffer a 25% attack penalty. This affects both melee and ranged units, and many early game battles in Age of Empires 2 involve small numbers of units dancing around each other on a hill trying to attack their opponent from high ground. I think it's also worth mentioning that Relic has done a decent job continuing to update and patch Company of Heroes 2 to this day. They even listen to community feedback. I only got into Company of Heroes 2 recently, so I never got to experience the game's state at launch in 2013, but from what I've heard, it wasn't pretty. Many players decided that they didn't like the game at launch, and went back to playing Company of Heroes 1, sort of like how most of us in the Age community went back to Age of Empires 2 within a few months of Age of Empires 3 coming out. But as Company of Heroes 2 has developed and received additional patches, it appears to have reached a respectably balanced state, with a decently varied meta, at least as far as I can tell as a relative newcomer. So regardless of the state of Age of Empires 4 at launch, it seems clear to me that Relic will be more than willing to work with the community to make it better, even years after release. Add on top of that the much larger Age of Empires player base and the financial backing of Microsoft, and I think there's more room for optimism than we in the Age community were willing to acknowledge when the game was first announced. I mentioned at the outset of this video that I think a Relic-developed Age of Empires 4 is probably the best thing for the RTS genre as a whole, and I do believe that. If Blizzard is the McDonald's of RTS in terms of brand recognition, we don't really have a Burger King right now. To extend this analogy, we could perhaps think of Relic as more of a Taco Bell or Dairy Queen, a major player who has cornered a specific area of the market, but just isn't quite on the same household name level yet. Age of Empires 4 could change that, and do wonders to revitalize the genre. Though Mike Morheim has hinted that he's at least interested in developing another Warcraft RTS game, and both the remastering of StarCraft 1 and the recent patches for Warcraft 3 are encouraging signs, it's not entirely clear if Blizzard will develop another RTS game. I've heard decently compelling arguments for both sides, and I think at the end of the day we just don't know. But if Age of Empires 4 is a success, Blizzard may be more likely to make another RTS game of their own. Who knows, it could even inspire EA to develop another traditional Command & Conquer game. In an era when we see fewer and fewer major developers making RTS games, I think we really ought to be a bit more positive towards the ones who do. Of course, that still doesn't mean that we should accept shoddy products simply out of a desire to be nice. If Age of Empires 4 doesn't meet our expectations, we should certainly be willing to provide constructive criticism. But it should be just that, constructive. I want Age of Empires 4 to exist, and if you're a fan of the Age series, you should too. The landscape for RTS games is just plain different from how it was 10 or 15 years ago. Most of the major players from the genre's heyday just don't exist anymore. If we're going to think of it in terms like the developer that made RTS game X is now making Age of Empires 4, I personally think that Company of Heroes is the best value for RTS game X that we could have hoped for. So let's stop biting the hand that feeds. Anyway, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider rating, commenting, subscribing, or sharing. See you soon.